Yes, I know the title is clickbait, but I truly am using an iPad Pro for the first time fully as an Android user. And this is my two week uh, report for you guys. Thunder E here from Border Work. If you join us for the very first time, we make videos like this on the channel. Hit that subscribe button and notification icon so you can watch more videos like this. So this is the iPad Pro. And the first thing you notice with this device, uh, especially as a user, is how thin it is. Now, I'm used to thin tablets. This is not a new thing. I've had the Galaxy Tab S Ultra. That's super thin from last year, 13 inches. Very different aspect ratio. But this is thinner than that by a little bit. So that's where I'm coming from. That's the tablet I've used. And I mostly use that tablet for consuming entertainment, playing games, you know, when I travel. And that's what this is actually replacing. I actually have a trip coming up um, at the end of the week. I'm heading to Computex, so this will be with me on that trip. But the experience using this iPad has been a very interesting one. I've had conversations with Hayato here where he forced me to basically do this video in a sense. He's like, go ahead and use it. Use it as a day-to-day and see how it works. So I have, of course, uh, my you know Magic Keyboard here, and I also have the Folio case. So I've been using the Magic Keyboard with this iPad uh, for the last two weeks. And it is a very smooth experience to just kind of like, see, pop that up. It's super simple, pop it out. I love this. I love this kind of simple accessories. But the iPad itself is dope. We know the specs. We've got that tandem OLED display, looks lovely, can be very reflective, and also a fingerprint magnet like any big display, so that's standard. It's, again, light and thin, so when you're using it, even if you're holding it in bed or just on the couch, it's comfortable to hold and use, right? The M4 chip is one thing I found interesting in this, in this device because the kind of power and performance it brings in is something you're not used to seeing a device like this, but you technically are, even though I said it that way, it's because you have the M2, of course, in the iPad Pro, previous generation. The reason I say is that the M4 is really in a class of its own. Um, it's something that we haven't seen in any other Apple device, and they were able to kind of fit it in here uh, quite effectively. So what have I actually used this device for? Games. Yes, games. That's what I do. I've played all the games on, on the channel and I have played a ton of games on this iPad. I do have a gaming video for you, so you guys go check that out specifically for the iPad. But just to give you a rundown of the games I've played, Call of Duty Mobile, that's not intensive. We know that. Uh, Genshin Impact, that's a pretty intensive game. Uh, PUBG Mobile, Call of Duty Warzone, which sneakily is intensive, and Resident Evil. Uh, some people ask me to also play, um, what's that other game? Dead Rising or? Dead Stranding. Dead Stranding, yes, you heard that, right? That's Hayato, he's behind the camera. But I also played some of that as well, and it just handles. It works, no issues. Now, people ask me, what about longer gameplay sessions? Uh, I've done about 30 minutes. Temperatures were still the same in the gaming video. Performance was still the same. 120 frames uh, per second for certain games that actually support that. Console level games like Resident Evil, Death Stranding, no issue. Smooth, solid. Now, I did say I came from the Galaxy Tab S Ultra, and how does that compare? Well, a quick side-by-side, -side, you can see how they perform. And the Galaxy S Tab S Ultra is using last year's Snapdragon HM2, so this is going to be better. It's a, this is a desktop chip in here. That's the kind of performance I like. So for my gaming experience, it's been great. Now watching content has been beautiful on this. Display is lovely. It's, it's a very comfortable experience. You know, when I'm on this couch, just laying back and like catching up with some anime, watching movies, the speakers, woo, woo. Look, Android manufacturers, PC manufacturers, just copy, open it up, take the speakers out and make the same thing. Copy it. And, and this is not even a matter of software. The drivers are just better. They sound really good, but don't take my word. Just take a listen to yourself. So 
we've got a very good audio experience. Now, when you look at the pricing of this device, I didn't buy the specific model. The first one, which I covered, I did. That was a 256 gigabyte model. That starts at 1,299. This is one terabyte. This is 1,800, 1,899. And then the two terabyte, which is the highest model you can get, that is 2,299. Whew. <laughs> That's a lot of money. <laughs> and that begs the question, what can you do if you're spending that kind of money on this device? So Apple talked about some of the great features you can do because it's got an M4 chipset. And they showcase Logic Pro 2, which is a very good and powerful music tool for music editors. They showcase the new camera app that can sync four different cameras at the same time, pull it in, you can edit on here. Final Cut as well. People have used DaVinci Resolve on here to edit. That kind of stuff does really well. And then you pair it with the Apple Pencil Pro, which is a fantastic tool for drawing, writing. It's very sensitive. It's now got that squeeze feature, which they, eh, you'd say taking a couple from Samsung, because Samsung has a button, but it's still very nice to use. Uh, it's something that I've never used. You know why I say that? Is because I do not draw. I'm terrible. Only if it's AI assisted, that's when I do my drawing. But this is something I think a lot of people will like. A lot of artists will like because this helps do more. You can have quick access to all the um, all your tools that you want to use. The problem and the downside is the Apple Pencil Pro uh, can only be used with the M4 iPad. And you're going, ooh, there must be some new hardware on the M4 iPad, like the M4 chipset. No, it's not the chip. Apple kind of stated that they redesigned the way charging is, even though it charges in the same spot, a la the top, but it's a very different charging mechanism, which is why it cannot be used on the M2 iPad Pro, which I find honestly ridiculous. I think Apple could have made a charging case for it, a USB charging, and I think that would have helped a lot of people use, continue using the M2, but if you want to take advantage of this awesome pencil, which I've seen from a lot of creators, you have to get this device and it is expensive. So that part is there. Now the keyboard, Magic Keyboard. This is solid. It works really well. I like the way it feels when you're typing. It is, it's a fun experience. Now that's just me fake typing, but it works very well. One of the downsides for me, which isn't a downside for Ayato is I feel it makes it just thicker and heavier. This is a very thin tablet. Once you close it up, for me, I might as well just take a MacBook. That's just my thinking. That's what I think there. Not saying it's not usable. I think it's actually thinner than previous generation from what I've heard from people, but I feel it's just thicker and it doesn't make sense for a tablet. But I am not that generation of person that uses a tablet for everything. Now, the one thing I'll say with the keyboard, it still has the issue is that if you're typing in your lap, and you kind of tilt it forward, you've got this imbalance where it starts feeling like it's about to tip over. So that is something to take note. Now, the folio case I do like is pretty thin and light. And what I love about this is the fact that when you basically slap it on, it's very thin. You also have many degrees of standability, if it's what I'll call it, being able to put in different angles so that you can actually use this well. This is probably my favorite traveling case for this. I think a lot of people will like that. The keyboard, you know, it's if you're gonna be a lot of typing on this device. Now, when it comes down to the nitty gritty of things is, should you get the iPad Pro 2024 with the M4 chipset? It's an easy question to answer and it's also a hard one to answer. The easy answer is no. You don't need all that power performance for most people. Most people are not gonna be using Logic. Uh, most people are not gonna be editing with say uh, DaVinci Resolve and nothing says that the M2 can't run that either, at least most of the features there, right? But if you are a creator or you're a power user and you've kind of moved to working around with an iPad, then that might actually be the case for you that that works uh, because, you know, uh, the M4 chipset has a lot of power for those kind of applications. And also the battery life, which I hadn't mentioned earlier, is fantastic. It's thinner and it actually lasts as long as the previous generation. My use case scenario in the two weeks that I've had this device, I have knownly charged it maybe three times. Honestly, I swear, other than after a, you know, gaming sessions, which I do have to charge because you're using a lot of power on there, but I've knownly charged it about two or three times, which for me is great. But as a power user, this is very, very solid. Now, the big question is, what does this chip do for power users or users in general after Apple makes this announcement at DubDub with AI? We know that the 
M4 chipset has 40 tops of uh, MPU performance, which everyone's talking about. We've seen people like Qualcomm talk about 45 tops in there. So they're on the same ball, ballpark, and we've seen what some of the stuff from Microsoft can do. So I'm excited to see what Apple brings to the table with this device in terms of onboard AI performance, you know, being able to run some of these generative AI uh, capabilities on the device and not on the cloud, you know, which would be great for users. And I think that's where this lies, the future use case scenario, the fact that this probably won't be updated for at least a couple of years, begs the question if that is worth it for you. For me, I think this is a lot of great power. I love the power, but is it worth the price? It's a yes and no. It's a hard question to answer because it's worth it for you. For me, it is because I game. So if you have any questions, any comments, let me know. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Pretty solid.